Laguna de Santa Rosa is part of a 250 square mile watershed. The watershed is just an area of land that captures rainfall. Some of that rain percolates down into the ground and travels through the groundwater system. Some of it runs overland, either through creeks or streams or in small swales. It heads downhill towards the Laguna de Santa Rosa. So the Laguna drains the Myocamas and Sonoma Mountain to the east and the Sebastopol Hills to the west, bringing all that flow down to this point, the confluence with the Russian River. The Laguna de Santa Rosa is a 14 mile long waterway, but it's so much more than that. It changes all throughout its journey. It starts in Katati and flows through all different types of wetland habitat. Sometimes the laguna is shallow, permitting the growth of emergent vegetation. These are plants that grow below the surface of the water and emerge above the surface, things we're familiar with in a freshwater marsh like tulies and cattails. Other places along the laguna, the bank is richly forested with hardwood species like ash or elderberry or valley oak. This hardwood forest is called a riparian habitat. It grows along streamside, both the laguna and some of its tributaries. It's a dense forest with multiple canopy layers that provide habitat for many different types of plants and animals. The Laguna de Santa Rosa receives vast amounts of water every year during our winter rainfall. And that water then travels through the laguna, often causing the laguna to overflow its banks into its annual floodplain. The annual floodplain acts as a sponge to temporarily store water and slowly release it downstream. And that prevents flooding in the Russian River. In fact, without the Laguna de Santa Rosa, it's estimated that Guerneville would be 14 feet deeper underwater during the major storms that we receive in the winter. Moving up from the annual floodplain, we find a grassland that's dotted with valley oaks. And then intermixed in the Valley Oaks are a special seasonal wetland called vernal pools. We'll explore all these habitats in our environmental tour of the Laguna de Santa Rosa. Okay, so let's get going and explore the Laguna de Santa Rosa. We're here at the bridge that crosses the Laguna at Occidental Road near High School. And what you see is a lot of open water, these big ponds. This is one of the big open water areas in the Laguna and all the way now uh, upstream to almost Katati is the real heart of the Laguna. Every winter, even in the mildest winter, water will fill the Laguna and overflow that bank to where I'm standing now. In really big storm years, the water could be 10 to 20 feet over my head right now. So instead of standing in the shade of this valley oak, I could be kayaking through the upper limbs. As evidence of just one of the hundreds of kinds of insects that we would find living amongst the oaks, we can collect some of these oak galls from underneath the trees. Now, these were created when a wasp used its mouthpiece to irritate the tissue of the oak. The oak responded trying to protect itself by growing woody tissue around that injury. And the result formed this gall, which the wasp then used as a sanctuary to lay its eggs. And there's a whole world inside these galls because m once the gall is formed, more wasps may come in and lay their eggs as well. And sometimes predators of wasps come in, they know that the wasps are in here, and they will also, they'll use the gall to feed on the wasps. And if you find one from last year, you can see a series of holes that were used for the emerging larvae. We're visiting the City of Santa Rosa farm. It's a reclamation farm purchased for the irrigation of recycled water from the Laguna treatment plant. This particular area was set aside in 1985 as a natural area, so now it's for wildlife only and we've conducted a lot of restoration projects on this farm. I'm going to show you something really beautiful now. It's important to know that even though the laguna is 14 miles long, it's still a linear strip and there's been development on either side of the laguna. So what makes Alpha Wildlife Area so precious is that it has some girth. 
Alpha is connected to other publicly owned land, uh, the fish and game property to the north. And that means that we have this core area that really shows what the Laguna can be. This is one of the big ponds in the Laguna de Santa Rosa. And like all of the big open water, it attracts a different kind of waterfowl. It's no coincidence that just a stone's throw away, there's a rookery that hosts great blue herons and double-crested cormorants. And you can often see the cormorants hunting on the open water, diving to catch fish, and the great blue herons working along the margin. There's a completely different habitat type just around the bend where the Laguna Channel narrows down into a corridor that is shallow and filled with that emergent marsh vegetation, tulies and cattails and burr reed that hosts a completely different type of wildlife. I'm standing in a bed of basket sedge on the bank of the Laguna. This plant has a complex root system that is holding the soil on the edge of the bank in place. See how it's green even though we're into October now and everything else is dry and looks dead? Well, this plant is also a very important cultural plant. It was used by the pomo, the roots were cultivated to do the fine pomo basketry. It's getting close to sunset and this is the magic hour where the light changes. It's also when many animals become active. It's a great time to see wildlife in the Laguna. Even if you don't see something like a river otter or a mink or a bobcat or a mountain lion or coyote or a fox in your visit to the Laguna, you may see evidence of all kinds of different animals. So if you know what to look for, you may find something like this trail that I'm standing on. Now this was made by wildlife deer and their predators moving through the area. And these trails always lead to some great resource. It may be water, it may be food, it may be shelter. There's a nearby den in the berry bushes. There's footprints on the ground. We found feathers today. You can look for scat, all different evidence that will indicate wildlife has been present. 